What's popping, Flex Nation? And welcome back to another episode of the biggest flexes in anime, number 11. So, I know I said I wasn't gonna do the Flex Nation bit again, but I got so many comments saying, bring back Flex Nation. So, hashtag Flex Nation, and let's not ever do it again. There, everyone's happy now. I'm happy we're not doing it again. You're happy we did it one more time. Win, win. And speaking of win, wins, I wanted to do a themed biggest flexes in anime episode, and I was very much leaning to light novel themed characters from light novel based anime adaptations that flex really hard. Now, having this vague outline in mind, I was thinking, hmm. Sword Art Online, the irregular of Magic High School. Do ra ra ra. And then I was approached by the mobile game Crossing Void, who essentially said, Hello, Mr. Nuxanor san. To which I immediately corrected, That's Lord Nuxanor sama to you. And of course, they were very cordial and continued calling me Lord Nuxanor sama from that point on. And they were like, So, Crossing Void is this very interesting new game because not only is it like a good game and whatever, and I was like, Uh huh, uh huh. But it contains anime characters from like a billion different light novels. And I was like, Whoa. So, the original thought was for me to do a dedicated video on certain light novels that have an appearance in Crossing Void, and I was like, wait a second. I wanted to do this anyway. So, in the biggest flexes of anime, number 11, seven of the eight flexes present will be from characters that have an appearance in Crossing Void. And then the eighth character is going to be from one of the big three because I made a pact with myself that every single episode of the biggest flexes in anime will have at least one character from the big three. Why did I make this pact with myself? Because I'm nuts! So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the biggest flexes in anime! 11. Remember to smash like because 80,000 likes and the biggest flexes in anime 12 will be out within a week. First flex! The fact that I'm flexing on other YouTubers because this is how you make a sponsored video fam! <clears throat> First anime flex! Yes, I'm gonna be starting strong with Sword Art Online. I know Sword Art Online had a lot of talk on YouTube. Whether you love it or you hate it or you hate to love it, you fall in one of those three categories and everyone had something to say about Sword Art Online, except me, because I started my channel after the Sword Art Online hype train ended, so I could not leech off it, unfortunately. So here we go, a brand new take on Kirito, the master flexer from Sword Art Online. Because no matter what you say, and whatever category you fall into, Kirito flexes a lot, okay? And I'm not just talking about, you know, hacks, like after he dies, he comes back to life to kill Kayaba. No, that's not flexing, that's hacks, and will be included in my biggest hacks in anime video that may or may not be coming soon, so definitely subscribe. Right. What I am talking about is the fact that in Alfheim Online, when there was like this whole massive war that was gonna break out between the Salamander guys versus the Kate Sith and the other four billion races that I can't really keep track of because let's just say the lore in Alfheim Online was not exactly the strongest world building in all of anime ever. But this massive torrential battle was gonna take place. And then Kirito, a single Spriggan, is like, I am an ambassador and I will fight you. And then enemy general Eugene, who was by the way voice acted by Lord Twigo, says, <laughs> No way in hell, foolish boy. I am level 14 trillion, and I will face you. And then Kirito annihilates him, which was very cool. That was just to flex on everyone so that they could join him in his mission to save Asuna. And that's not his only flex. He does a ton of inadvertent flexing as well. Like in Gun Gale Online, the fact that this guy took a lightsaber to fight snipers and opponents with assault rifles is a huge flex. Yes, from his perspective, it was unintentional, but that's just what makes the flex all better. Does it make sense that he blocks an assault rifle with a lightsaber? No, even in in Star Wars, if the enemy droids would use assault rifles, the Jedi would be screwed. Let's call a spade a spade. Why are they all single shot pistols? Okay, not talking about epic Star Wars flexes here. We'll stay on topic. Kirito winning a gun tournament with a lightsaber is a massive flex from everyone else's perspective. But my personal favorite Kirito flex in all of Soda Donnerain is in the Mother's Rosario arc. So I've stated several times that I personally really loved the Aincred arc and the Mother's Rosario arc, and I personally thought thought the rest of it was, yeah, you know, it could have been better. And this scene in the Mother's Rosario arc is my favorite scene from that arc. The arc mainly follows Asuna and her journey with the Sleeping Knights, who are all players that dived into the game, but they all have a crazy illness making them not long for this world. They are extremely good in-game because they've pretty much escaped real life in order to live full-time in this virtual reality. It's very sad, I know, and they had a dream that they wanted to single-handedly beat a boss so they could get their names immortalized on this 
stone because they are the opposite of immortal. Yes, the theme is actually relatively dark, and we don't have Kirito a lot because we wanted to focus on Asuna, who successfully did absolutely nothing for the majority of the series. No offense, Asuna fans, I'm just spitting facts here. Kirito's massive flex is when the new boss fight is about to start, and you have your, like, six sleeping night guys trying to attack the boss, and this massive raid party of hundreds, potentially even thousands of players are running behind them because they want to beat the boss. The sleeping knights are like, oh well, dreams ruined, what can we do? We can't face all these way too many guys. And then Kirito stands up for his whammon and says, I will face these 14 trillion dudes. Now, obviously Kirito can't win. He's not intending to win. And of course he loses off screen because we can't actually have Kirito lose on screen. But if I can just express how much I love this scene, Kirito uses everything he learned in Gun Gale Online to block magic attacks with his bare hands, just wielding swords in Alfheim Online. And of course he flexes on them saying, ha, these magic attacks are way slower than, you know, assault rifle rounds. And he proceeds to block all of them and then face off single-handedly against like a billion players with Klein way in the background, because Klein is always way in the background. And yes, it is absolutely true that Kirito did not stand a chance and probably lost that fight even though it was off screen. But he managed to hold off an army so that the Sleeping Knights can actually fight. Now, the reason why this flex is so big is purely because he knew nothing about the Sleeping Knights. He had no reason to ruin his reputation and fight and hold down this army while the Sleeping Knights could fight the boss. He did it purely because the person he loved seemed like she wanted him to do it. And because of that very basic reason alone, he flexed on the entire top tier player base of Alfheim Online, forever sullying his own reputation. And flex on them he did. If you hold off an army of players that should all be relatively equivalent in strength to you, that's a huge flex. So, Sorted Online haters, I apologize, but there's a lot of great in there. And this flex was huge. Yes, essentially biggest flexes in anime is a series where I could just talk about my favorite scenes unfiltered and no one could question me. What of it? Sorry, I had to flex on you there. I just love what I do, fam, and loving what you do makes what you do better, so do what you love. Yes, very inspirational video here talking about Sword Art Online. Oh, glad we're all on the same page. Next flex! Sadao Mao, otherwise known as, uh, Satan from The Devil is a Part Timer. Devil in the title referring to Satan, also known as Sadao Mao. Who is Satan, the devil that is currently a part-timer? Yes, that's a relatively long title of an anime, I understand. But it's a reverse isekai. It's a story about Sadao Mao, who is a devil that later works as a part-timer when he leaves his devilish realm and joins our normal world and needs a way to make money. So he works in McDonald's instead of trying to take over the universe like most devils seem to do. Yes, you know Scheist is gonna be goddamn hilarious when Satan becomes the protagonist and works in a fast food restaurant. And it is. Sadao Mao becomes one of the greatest anime protagonists, I kid you not, ever. And this is one of my favorite isekai anime, I kid you not again, ever. Easily top 10. Now, of course, the female protagonist is the hero from the other world that comes to the normal human world to try and capture slash kill Satan, who at this point is just a really good dude working hard hours in a fast food place, where somehow he becomes the really positive fellow and the hero ends up the Tsundere Bimbo. The setup is flawless. The characters are amazing. I can't get over how much I love this anime and it's sad that no one really talks about it because it really needs a season two, please. So before putting this video together, I was like, all right, gotta get this fresh in my mind to raise my hype levels so I can convey the awesomeness to you. So, there are two extremely awesome flexes that Satan does in Devil's Apart Tiber, and I just rewatched both of those episodes before putting this script together. Come hither, my children, because this anime is even better than I remember. All right, so first off, Satan pretty much doesn't have any powers in this world because his power source comes from the dismay and distress of others around him that he can then harness to make himself more powerful. Since he's not wreaking havoc in this world and everything is more or less going decently, he pretty much don't have no powers. So. Everyone that attacks him knows that too. So there's this whole strategy between some priest guys and some rebellious demon dudes that they want to like take him down and yeah, it doesn't really work out so well. They attack him and they cause a little ruckus and that little ruckus that they cause gives him more than enough power to completely annihilate both of them. But when he does, he expresses to them just how petty of a threat they actually are His opponent's like Lucifer, okay? And Lucifer's readying this massive attack and all of a sudden Satan is fast enough to just appear in his face and then slowly says to Emmy, the hero, by the way, who was supposed to be killing him but is at this point sort of on his side because she's in Sundere, hey, Emmy, what should I do? 
with him. Well, Emmy says, he should take responsibility for turning the city upside down. And then Satan says, well, that's right. Not to mention that if I'm late for work after this, it's your fault, Lucifer. At this point, Lucifer is like pissing himself. He is terrified. He's like, what are you talking about? And Satan then carefully and slowly explains to him, what are you going to do if I miss out on employee of the month because of this? And of course, other demons in the background are hearing this and they obviously don't know what's going on. They don't realize he's working in a fast food place and they're like, he speaks of matters eternally beyond our comprehension. And at this point, Satan is strong enough and has gathered enough power to basically wipe this snot out of Lucifer with a punch. But instead, Satan gives him, you know, the respect that he should while flexing on his face entirely, saying, stand ready as a demon general should. And then he slowly takes his time to charge an attack with not one magic circle, which is more than enough to defeat him, but like thousands of them so that we get a bird's eye view from the atmosphere of Satan making a little explosion, turning Lucifer into a trembling little bitch that Sin says, I am so sorry, I will never disobey you. And the beauty is Satan's like, no problem, fam. It's not possible for you to even want to disobey me after I flexed on you so hard. He flexed on this guy that rebelled against him so hard. He had so much faith in him now because he knows there's no way after the massiveness of the flex, this guy will ever rebel ever again. And he was right. I'm sorry, but this flex is huge. Now, I was gonna talk about his other flex, which is in like episode 10 of the series, but even though it's not a real spoiler, because it's just how he destroys his opponent, it was so damn enjoyable! You have no idea. The whole thing is 12 episodes. I kid you not, you are missing out if you haven't seen it. Go watch The Devil is a Part-Timer. You will piss in your pants from hilarity, and the flexes in episode 5 and 10 are chills worthy. Like, for example, in middle of his flex, in episode 10, he's up against this guy who is so cockily expecting to be far stronger than Satan. And while Satan is fighting him, he takes his time to catch the Tsundere who's falling off a building and tell her, oh, by the way, Emmy, random thought, uh, I could see your boobs. Your shirt is accidentally torn in the front, but I'm just gonna continue fighting right now. And he did it like an absolute gentleman. I mean, I'm a big fan of Madara's flex when he flexed on the Kage telling them, yo, Kage, it's your choice if you want my wood clones to use Susano or not. I think that that's a brilliant flex and one of his greatest. And well, let's just say, if I can compare a fight in episode 10 of a show to have equivalent level flexing with Madara, who is hyped forever, it's done something right. Because he's up against this guy, Sariel, and he says to Sariel, Sariel, as a benevolent overlord as I am, I let you choose. And Sariel's like, choose what? Will you run away with your tail between your legs? Or will you pay for this by becoming my punching bag? And then with the most bored expression of all time, he says to him, choose your fate. The flex was gorgeous. It was huge. So now, Mao, you are one of the greatest flexors. I highly recommend The Devil is a Part-Timer. Next flex! And it's from Do Ra Ra Ra. The hype is real. It is not often that I could talk about the absolute mad laddery of Shizuo Heiwajima. Yes, my favorite character in the series is hands down Isaiah Orihara. But when it comes to biggest flexors, we gotta talk about the real flexor here first. All right? So for those of you who don't know what Do Ra 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 is about, it's about a city called Ikebukuro. This city, pay attention closely because it's the only place you'll hear it said, is the protagonist of Durarara. Yes, we have several characters that are more main characters than others, but it's all within the context of what's going on in Ikebukuro. The city is the protagonist. Fact! Now, there's a lot of really weird stuff going on in Ikebukuro. The seeming main character, Mikado Ryugamine, is secretly the leader of this massive gang. There are also several other massive gangs. There's also some supernatural stuff going on, like a sword that can create zombies that obey you, but you don't even notice because they're normal people until you kind of turn on the zombification thing and all of a sudden they're slaves to the owner of that magic sword. There's also a headless horseman, or well, a headless horse woman that isn't on a horse, but is on a motorcycle, which is her horse. It gets weird, okay? And like, she's extremely powerful with her black scythe magic goop thingo. And the beauty of this anime is surface level. When you're first introduced to Ikebukuro, you don't really notice anything weird going on. But as you proceed to learn more about the happenings within Ikebukuro, you realize that it is absolutely
absolute chaos behind the scenes. I love it. It's a brilliant take on society and how all society on the outside looks normal and happenstance, but underneath, everyone's insane. Maybe I'm self-projecting a little bit, but we are going to ignore that, and I still love my interpretation of do-da-da-da. -da -da. Now, why am I mentioning this? This isn't, let me tell you about eight epic anime. Also, fun fact, there were flexes in them. <laughs> no, no, no. I have to explain to you exactly how nutso this city is in order to explain why Shizuo Hiwajima has the greatest flexes ever. Out of context? Yeah, true. He flexes hard. But within the context of a city that has undead demons, a mafia, several Russian KGB operatives strategically placed throughout, a mad scientist, a zombification sword, and an information broker, who is, by the way, the greatest character in the series and one of the greatest of all time, that really is the only guy that seems to know everything that's happening, and he still manages to get punched in the face literally in the final episode of every season of Dura Dura. I love this chaos! So now that you realize a ton of random stuff is going on, and all of it sounds extremely badass, let me tell you about Shizuo Hiwajima. He's this guy who's abnormally strong. Yes, that is correct. You heard me right. I did not stutter. He is a regular dude. He is not mafia. He is not KGB. He is not part of a gang. He is not undead. He is not magic in any way. And he's not a super brilliant sociopath that just likes toying with human emotions. He is a regular guy. And he's not even the main character. So now, this regular guy that walks around in a barkeep uniform, mostly because someone bought him a barkeep uniform and he worked as a barkeeper but then got fired because he accidentally destroyed, like, everything. So he's like, yeah, why waste money on new clothes? I'll just walk around looking like a barkeep. It's genius! This nonchalant regular guy is the most powerful, most terrifying character in the entire city. He makes friends with a bunch of people, hates some other people. But in this world of undead, sword, mind-controlled individuals almost taking over a city and they are single-handedly defeated by just Shizuo, you know you're messing with a flexor. The guy throws vending machines. He kicks vans across the street and he rips up an entire guardrail to hit people with. He uses highway signs to play golf with cars going 80 miles an hour. He punched someone in the face so hard that as they flew away spinning, all their clothes flew off. He hits people with lamp posts, not with weapons he keeps on him. And when he wants to get to the top floor of the building, he can literally just run up the side of the building. This guy flexes on Zawardo by being the only normal guy, but still by far the strongest and most terrifying. There's a lot of crazy shiz going on in Ikebukuro, and the one thing they actually warn people is stay away from Shizuo Heiwajima. Next flex! Tatsuya Shiba from The Irregular in Magic High School. Fun fact, Tatsuya Shiba actually is the irregular at the Magic High School in question, and yes, that is not a spoiler. This guy's overpowered from moment A. So at first he's like, oh, I don't really be so good magic. I don't do no how how to uh, use it and stuff, and like everyone's like, wow, that guy's English sucks balls. Okay, I added that for flavor. No one ever said that. Now, he's not so good at magic without using magic tools, so at first they rate him really low, and you know, he proceeds to flex on everyone for the entire series. At first you think, yeah, he's not so good at magic. He can only use tools. And then you realize when he uses tools, he's like literally the greatest sorcerer in the world. And you know I'm serious? Because I said, uh, the world, not the world, though. Now you probably think I'm exaggerating. I understand that you have an overpowered student, but the student's not gonna be like the strongest ever, right? <laughs> wrong. So, in this case, I would personally change the title to The Flexor at Magic High School and not gonna lie, it's an even hyper title than The Irregular at Magic High School. It would have definitely sold more copies. In the beginning, we're like, okay, so there are crazy magic tools that everyone has and uses to get by, and Tatsuya of course uses them to their utmost extent. What you didn't know is that not only is Tatsuya really freaking awesome in magic while using magic tools, but he also invents all the magic tools! Yeah, that's right, they could just make him broken because of items they had to also have him make the items that the entire universe uses which makes him broken he's so broken in fact that they don't even call him out on the incest yes his sister loves him of course because <laughs> little sisters in anime just tend to do that occasionally and the show's not even made fun at because of the incest because he's so broken yes there's this evil meeting of really powerful evil dudes in some building somewhere and Tatsuya from like a hundred miles away with a pistol clicks the trigger and every time he clicks the trigger a different member of that council of evil dudes evaporates. That's right. He uh, disintegrates this entire meeting of evil dudes from miles away by clicking the trigger of a handgun. That's just an example to show how he's very overpowered and happens to flex a lot. But you know something's really not right when he goes into a basement, takes a sniper rifle, and they're like, what are you gonna do with a sniper rifle? And he's like, oh, uh, you know that invasion that's about to attack us? That uh, huge fleet of ships? Yeah, I got this. And the government official guys are like, oh, I don't see why you could be able to do that. And he just flexes on them saying, yeah, let me just uh, click the trigger for 
for one second, and he does. And he disintegrates the entire fleet of ships that were attacking them. Yeah, this guy flicks a hell of a lot. In fact, I may have even made it sound a little dumb, and I apologize if I did. But even though explaining his overpoweredness does make it sort of sound dumb, I cannot fail to express that the flexes were actually top tier. I mean, when the guy is clicking the trigger of his handgun inside and no bullets are coming out, and everyone's like, what are you actually doing? And he's like, oh, nothing. And then you see, like, an outside view, a bunch of enemy jeeps that are about to attack them are just disintegrating. Yeah, he's a flexer. What can I say? He doesn't even take credit for this shit. You think that's broken? He also has clones of himself that could regenerate to the health that they were in up to like 24 hours ago. And he can also heal anyone up to 24 hours before as well. So yes, his brokenness abilities didn't freaking stop ever. So even though I would say that the power scaling in the series is not the utmost greatest, the flexes are. And now before continuing, I would like to talk for just a brief moment about my sponsor for this video, Crossing Void. I've mentioned them earlier. Crossing Void is a massive crossover of some of the most popular light novels and most of the most popular characters within those light novels. Everyone I've mentioned thus far and three more that I'm about to mention is just seven and there are like 50. It's an anime turn-based RPG mobile game where the fights are fun, the character gathering is amazing, and it has all the basic high points of what a mobile RPG can offer except bonus. It really encapsulates the feel of the different anime and different characters. My favorite character to use in this game happens to be Shizu Ohewajima because the raw greatness that he exhibits in Durarara is perfectly captured in Crossing Void. The madness of this guy slapping his opponents with street signs is exactly what I want in a mobile game and more. And with the game implementing anime characters, of course, the community is of one mind as well. Maybe I'm biased because I'm an anime tard, but it's one of my favorite communities I've seen in an RPG. And in fact, there are even community awards if you follow them on Facebook and Twitter. It's an RPG where there are meta events that are community based as opposed to just within the game. Not to mean that there aren't also massive events within the game, but that's an entirely different story. There are events where you have to guess which anime character they're talking about based on the silhouette with of course in-game rewards. And all in all, if you're an anime fan that's looking for an RPG, I highly suggest Crossing Void. And if you pre-register now by clicking that link in the description, boom, you get a bunch of pre-registration rewards. Thanks Crossing Void for sponsoring this video and back to the video. So the next flex I wanted to talk about and it was a flexer I wanted to talk about for a while. It's Accelerator from Tuaru Majutsu no Index. So full disclosure, the reason why I didn't talk about him yet is because even though I've seen bits and pieces of him and I absolutely love the guy because he's a psycho, not that I relate to him or anything Bakas, is because I never successfully sat through the whole damn series. I have history, I have beef with the Index franchise. Long story short, I got together with a friend, yes, an IRL friend. Those exist too. It's not that anyone else could see him, but I could see him. That's what counts for me. And we got together to watch Index. I was really hyped. He was really hyped. We watched one episode. I liked it. It was around midnight, so we made a pact. We will continue this tomorrow. Then the next day came, I met up with him, and he already finished the entire freaking series. Oh, you think I meant one season? No! He watched two seasons! The bastard! In any case, I haven't gotten back to Index. I'm sorry. Accelerator, with the scenes I have seen, is already a character that I can say I personally love. The fact that this guy is fighting against main character Whammon, and she says, what are you even after? You're already like the strongest guy ever. And he's like, I know. I'm not chasing any specific goal. In fact, I do already have power. I am chasing absolute power. And then in the next scene, he completely flicks away main character Whammon's ultimate attack. And then like, oh, uh, oops, was that your ultimate attack? That was pretty stupid. I don't know. I saw that scene and I was just totally floored. But Noble from Lost Paws is like, oh my God, you got to talk about Accelerator. He's an epic flexor. So here is two minutes of Noble hyping the crap out of Accelerator. Thank you, Noble. Extremely cool. Link to Noble's channel is also in the description. The guy's a beast and he's really trying to convince me to watch Index. I definitely should. What's cracking, fan base? Can can I say that? Today we're going to be talking about one of the best flexors. I'm talking about Accelerator. He is the number one esper in an entire academy city. His ability Vectors allows him to change the direction of anything that comes his way. He can even get nuked and he would be perfectly fine. Now this guy is so sick of everyone challenging his number one rank of strongest that he wanted to shift to a level six. So nobody would even dare 
think of getting close to him. To which he agreed to do an experiment to kill level 3 ability clones of Misaka Makoto. However, the clones only have the power of level 3s, so that's why he has to kill approximately 20,000 of these clones. But anyway, the flex today I'm gonna be talking about is the 10,031th Misaka, where she is running away from this godlike character, and he's just casually walking. She eventually brings him to a point after being utterly humiliated, to a point where he steps on a landmine and it explodes underneath him. And she thinks this finally gets him. She's like, Target has finally been neutral. Oh no, of course he does the dramatic stepping out of the dust like, come on, was that it? Grabs her leg and just casually rips it off like a freaking chicken drumstick. She's crawling away, still trying to fight back, and he's just like, ah, it looks like I've broken another one. He lifts up an entire train and drops it on top of her. There was no need. He just decided, you know what? Train her. Like freaking Road Roller Deal would be proud of this boy, all right? But this is where we'll end it today, so I hope you guys enjoyed my little tribute to Accelerator Flexing. Now back to you, Nux. Next Flex! So this is from an anime called Kino's Journey, and well, I can't really spoil it because it's about this character named Kino that journeys around to many different civilizations and societies learning different things along the way. It is one of my favorite slice of life anime, I will just put that out there, but the thing about Kino is, she is just a whammon with a pistol, and for whatever reason, no matter what she's up against in any of these civilizations, she ends up flexing on them. I don't want to give you specific examples because every single episode in Kino's Journey has a punchline that is definitely far better experienced watching it and you can get the entire vibe from a single episode. Yes, it gets better almost every episode, but you'll get the idea by just watching one. Kino pulls up to New City, tries to learn things about the society, turns out everything is really twisted, Kino flexes on them and leaves. And I just figured I kind of had to include that into the biggest flexes in anime series because, well, he flexes once an episode. Next flex! So until this point, in the biggest flexes in anime series, I've talked about characters flexing on one another. Like Eskin or flexing on Esterosa, telling him he pities him. I've had people flexing on an army, like Madara, dropping a second meteor. The first one wasn't really a flex, the second one was a huge flex. We've had people flexing on the entire known world, like Shanks from One Piece pulling onto Marineford and stopping the war. We've had people flexing on the god of their universe, like Tanya the Evil, telling God, yeah, God, thanks for bringing me back to life, but I don't believe you exist. And we've had One Punch Man flexing on the meta-narrative of all shown in anime. They're all working so hard, to get strong, and he just one punches these insane opponents. We've had flexes on all levels of scale, but none, none flex quite like the one I'm about to mention from Golden Time. Yes, you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, Golden Time? Isn't that a romance anime? Yes, it is a romance anime. It is one of my favorite romance anime, by the way. And this flex, this beautiful flex, flexes on genders and sexualities themselves. There's this one dude who is being harassed by a whammon who loves him, and as much as he tries, he can not get away from this whammon trying to hook up with him. So then, Tada Banri, the protagonist whose name echoes for generations, walks up to his friend. As his friend is being attacked by this whammon who is trying to have his babies, puts his arm around his friend, and then Tada Banri absolutely breaks the fabric of anime with the awesomeness of this flag. Bye, bye, friend. Ooh. That is correct. This absolute mad lad flexed on her concept and her understanding of sexualities as she knew it. In this one moment, she, the stalking bimbo, was completely annihilated from the most flamboyant flexing of all time. You thought it was kinda gay when Alex Luis Armstrong keeps throwing off his clothes every two seconds to give hugs to the Elric brothers? Well, that's got nothing on Tadaban. Flexing with the power of absolute gayness to chase away this thought. I know, I thought it was pretty beautiful. Touched my soul. Know what I mean? I'm sure you relate. Next flex! Finally, we get to the big three flex, meaning one flex from a character in the big three because I can't do a flex video without talking about one of the big three. We talking Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. Now, I can recite all of the various things he's done throughout the series. I can talk about how he teleported a tail beast bomb into the distance and then said boom as it exploded miles away. I can talk about how this guy mastered sage chakra mode in literally an instant 
when he was revived. And even though he was already missing half his limbs, he was still able to fight Madara and Jubito for a bit. I can talk about how when most people use the Shadow Shuriken Jutsu, it's like they threw two Shuriken. But this guy throws a Shuriken and uses the Shadow Shuriken Jutsu. And it's like he fired a massive Gatling gun of Shuriken. I can talk about how this guy outsped the fourth Raikage, who is said to be as fast as lightning in their fight. But honestly, I don't think any of that encapsulates exactly how much this guy flexes. No, even when he dropped his bag, beat up a whole group of enemy ninja that were about to hurt Kakashi when Kakashi was his student, and then you see the bag land on the ground, that was just brilliant visual storytelling and the narrator of Naruto, as well as the producers, flexed on us on the fourth Hokage's behalf. The biggest flex, in my opinion, about Minato is the fact that this guy was labeled a threat level of run on sight. Yes, you have many dangerous opponents in war, but how often is a single individual opponent given the run on sight rating? The fact that this guy is so dangerous just by seeing him turn the other direction and run. The fact that no matter what massive battle strategy you have and how many men are by your side while you're attacking or defending, when you see Minato turn tail and drop the battlefield like a hot potato, he flexed on the concept of war. Minato Namikaze, epic flexer, very cool dad, smash like on the biggest flexes in anime 11, so the biggest flexes in anime 12 can be out within a week. Thank you so much, Crossing Void, for sponsoring this video. Once again, link to Crossing Void in the description. Feel free to check it out. I do not think it will let you down. Let me know future flexes you'd like me to cover in the future, and definitely subscribe. That would be very awesome, and it will let you know when the biggest flexes in anime 12 will come out. And also, stop asking me to do the biggest flexes in hentai. Just putting that out there. <laughs> the meme is dead. Please don't do it anymore. Have yourselves the most wonderful evening, and remember to stay weird, fam.